Welcome to Distributed Systems and Blockchain in the News. My name is Thomas Bocek and this is a short weekly summary of interesting news that is relevant to my Distributed Systems and Blockchain lecture here at the Eastern University of Applied Sciences. So recently I came across the following interesting project here. It's PKDNS. And this is a decentralized DNS server that provides self-sovereign and censorship resistant domain names. It represents an approach to domain name resolution that operates independently of traditional ICANN controlled DNS infrastructure. And it works with the mainline DHT, DHT for distributed hash table, which is the same network that has been powering BitTorrent for the past 15 years with approximately 15 million nodes this makes it the largest DHT network currently in operations. The system resolves records hosted on this DHT, leveraging its established infrastructure and proven reliability. And the advantages are there is no central authority required for domain name registration or resolution. Another advantage is that immediate domain name registration without any bureaucracy, no credit cards, no nothing and it's resistant to traditional DNS censorship methods. The drawback are that with civil attacks, you can remove or censor keys since the system relies on DHT, network health, an attacker with sufficient resources could potentially flood the network with malicious nodes and target specific keys for denial of service. And with enough malicious nodes, you could also create network partitions. There is another option. You can use a blockchain either in full, for example, that one here, this is ENS or any kind of other similar services. ENS stands for Ethereum Name Service and is a distributed open and extensible naming system based on the Ethereum blockchain, but other blockchains have other naming services. It maps human readable names like alias.eth to machine readable identifiers such as Ethereum addresses, content hashes, and metadata. ENS operates as a set of smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain, making it secure and immutable. And here the advantages are that its blockchain backed security means it's immutable and it has a built in governance and dispute resolution mechanism. The drawback here I see is that um, you have high gas costs with Ethereum and also the speed is limited to the block confirmation time, which is now roughly around 12 seconds. And you have a centralization risk because there is this ENS DAO governance that you can see as a central entity. Well, maybe a combination of both could reduce these disadvantages, for example, use a DHT for fast record updates and store root records on blockchain for security, maybe. However, such a system would need to balance the increased complexity against the potential benefits and would require significant engineering as it will most likely become a complex system. The next article is about a Solana meme coin. In just seconds, millions of dollars vanished into thin air. We talked in the lecture how millions are created out of thin air. Well, they can vanish as well. On Wednesday, 23rd of October, a new meme coin called Shar Pay featuring a cute artwork of Shar Pay Dog launched on the Solana blockchain and within just one hour achieving a remarkable 54 million market capitalization. And the project's marketing relied heavily on crypto influencers with a leaked pitch deck revealing ambitious claims of partnerships with 50 and more top tier influencers, planned collaboration with major exchanges and supposed partnership with Bonk, a Solana leading meme coin. And this is how it all started. We see here a big jump. We see here a massive market capitalization. However, these claims quickly unraveled as influencers denied or some influencers denied any involvement. 
and Bong's core contributor rejected the partnership claims. While not everything was fabricated, there were some influencers that admitted to being paid for promotion three months prior to the launch. The doubt began to emerge and the market cap dropped to 35 million US dollars. What followed was described as one of the most insane rocks ever seen as the price plummeted by 96% in just two seconds with the market cap crashing to 1.3 million in a coordinated sell-off that netted insiders roughly 3.4 million US dollars. And the blockchain analysis firm Bubble Maps revealed the sophisticated nature of the scam. 60% of the tokens were purchased at launch, spread across 100 or more than 100 addresses, then funneled to one central wallet and sold in a single devastating transaction. When confronted, the Sharpay team blamed fear, uncertainty and doubt, claiming they no longer had funds to contribute operations, while their promise to provide proof of influencer communications remain unfulfilled. The Sharpay incident serves as a reminder that in the wild world of crypto meme coins, if something seems too good to be true, it probably is. The next article is about UBS. UBS, the world's largest private bank, has launched its first tokenized investment fund on the Ethereum blockchain called UMINT. stands for UBS USD Money Market Investment Fund Token. And this initiative is UBS entry into the growing space of tokenized real-world assets, joining other financial giants like BlackRock and Franklin Templeton, who have already made similar moves. As discussed in my lecture, there needs to be a trusted entity to bring in real-world assets into the blockchain for a stablecoin, and one such entity could be USB with this token. With this in-house tokenized service, UBS is actively working to bridge the gap between traditional finance and decentralized systems. The service supports the entire asset lifecycle from origination and issuance to distribution and custody with an initial focus on bonds, funds and structured products. Ethereum leads the way in bringing real-world assets to the blockchain with over 3 billion US dollars in tokenized assets on its network. The total market of these tokenized assets is about 3.9 billion US dollars, mostly made up of US Treasury debt. Major financial firms are already involved. For example, BlackRock has 523 million US dollars in their Buidl fund, which is a tokenized fund that invests in short-term US treasury bills, making traditional government securities available on the blockchain. And Franklin Templeton has 408 million US dollars in their government money fund, showing how traditional finance is embracing blockchain technology. In the last article here, this is an article uh, where a software developer has sparked a debate in the tech community by challenging the industry standard deployment practices, suggesting that deployed code changes shouldn't take more than 10 seconds. In a blog post, the developer drew from a decade of experience running production environments to argue against the complexity of modern continuous integration and deployment system. The developer proposes a return to basics, a simple deployment method using traditional tools like bash script and rsync, rather than the complex containerized systems that have become industry standard. This approach contrasts sharply with the current practices at major tech companies where deployment processes can take 45 minutes or more. The author argues that while modern systems offer various safeguards, they've become unnecessarily complex and time-consuming, particularly for small applications and teams. And remarkably, you can do this even without outage, such a simple deployment. And he describes that restarting a service doesn't mean you will have an outage. 
your reverse proxy can keep the request until the server comes back online. For example, in Caddy, you can do this via try duration, increase that, and then the user will notice a delay, but not a disruption of the service. And the proposal has divided the tech community with some praising it simplicity and others warning of potential risks. And several experienced developers share similar experiences of successfully using streamlined deployment methods, while critics pointed out that modern CI-CD systems, despite their complexity, provide essential safety measures and automation that protect against human error. The discussion highlights a tension in the industry between the drive for maximum efficiency and the need for robust security and testing protocols, particularly as organizations scale their operations. As you know, I like simple solutions, but it shouldn't be too simple just deploying from your dev environment, typing in some commands could be dangerous. So there should be a balance of safety and simplicity.